So you wanna start a blog and make money online in 2022. What do you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis? So in this video, I'm gonna cover exactly what to do in your blog's first 90 days to get it to profitability. Basically, we wanna maximize the effective use of your time and shorten that runway to profitability so that you can take this thing full-time if you choose to. So make sure to bookmark this video as well because it's kind of a choose your own adventure type video. I'm covering the exact process in this video in the first 90 days. And then if you wanna dive deeper into each specific tactic, you can check out the other videos on screen to go deeper into that. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to watch my free masterclass on how to start a profitable blogging business. It goes over all the strategies in depth, content marketing, SEO, affiliate marketing, you know, what blogging is. It's a 90 minute training. Make sure to click the link, sign up for that, and let's get into the topic for today. So when we're first starting a blogging business, we really have to have our end goal in mind because that's gonna dictate our entire strategy. So an end goal can be things like, you know, what do you wanna do with this blogging business? Why are you building it? Typically we're building this on the side of a full-time job and we wanna do either, you know, start making some money on the side, maybe a few thousand dollars a month to pay down student loans or help pay your mortgage or all of these things. Or we could wanna build like a 10,000, 20,000, $50,000 blog and take it full time and surpass your income and all of these things. But we have to have that end goal in mind. We also have to realize that we're starting these on the side of a full time job. So we have to be wary of this. Ultimately, we have to focus on the right things at the right time to build passive income the fastest. Also known as, you know, we have time constraints. Most of us don't have the, the ability to do this, you know, 40 hours a week because we have another job. So how do we work, then get home and spend like those 10 hours a week possibly up to 20 hours a week of on the side. How do we spend those in the best way possible? And with these time constraints, we really have to maximize the effective use of our time because ultimately we wanna build this profit runway, get this blog successful, and we wanna do so in the shortest time frame possible. So we have to focus on working on the right things. So what do we do on a daily basis? And really the key in the first 90 days is to learn as much as humanly possible and do everything yourself. So yes, one of my strategies was outsourcing like the writing and freelance help with link building and all of those things early on and building this like a business. But to really build it like a business, you have to learn everything yourself and know how to do it and ma you know, master it before you start outsourcing it so that you can train effectively. So the key in the first 90 days, is just learn as much as you can. And then the goal here is to create a profit uh, runway and quit your full-time job within, I'm saying 12 months. Um, I did it within seven, but I did it like really aggressively working a lot on it. So we want to basically build this passive income machine based on content, ranking on Google, doing some link building, building authority in your niche, becoming, you know, see your face on that website, you're an authority, you're ranking for content, you're making passive income through affiliate marketing, maybe some ads, some consulting, whatever that looks like to you. But we want to have the end goal in 12 months be to pass your full-time income or at least match it. So that's a really good goal to have. now. First of all, we have to talk about like, okay, so I wanna do that, that's great. So first we need a website. So you might already have a blog on WordPress. So you may, may or may not have that, but really you have to realize that your blog is a living, breathing thing. And perfection is the number one enemy. Perfection is what slows you down. It's what keeps you focused on little details that don't matter, like the fonts, you know, you know, little details and the logo and the graphics and making sure every single word is perfect in each article. Perfection is the enemy because it just slows down growth. Blogs are living, breathing things. And what that means is every page can be updated. Every blog post can be updated. So we have a kind of a mantra. It's like, good enough, move on. If you know, you, if perfection is, is something that you struggle with, then it's like you can't spend two weeks perfecting an article because you think you're going to be judged. You have to actually just publish stuff and keep moving on and keep moving and pushing and focusing on the right things. A lot of people like to focus on the design and building this website perfectly, but every single minute you spend doing that, you're not spending it on ranking content. So... Really, perfection is the enemy. And then, you know, when we're setting up our site in my course, Blog Growth Engine, we cover exactly how to set up your core four pages. So that's your homepage, your about page, your blog archive page, basically your blog role, like how all the posts show up in your blog and your blog post template. And mainly, you know, WordPress themes have these built in so you don't have to really struggle with it. And the homepage, the homepage is basically a sales page about you. Like, who are you? What you're gonna be talking about on your blog, your, you know, a little brief preview of your story and what the site's about. And the good thing is the homepage can evolve and adapt and change a million times if you wanted to. When I first started mine, I had a different theme, I had a different message, all of that, and it's changed and evolved over the years. So that thing changes a lot. Your about page is kind of like a personalized story of you. You know, what, um, not just like your professional experience to look good, it's more or less your page to be vulnerable and share your unique message with the world. So what is your life story? Why are you creating this blog? You know, what is it about? Who are you? And you know, those more interesting about pages work well. Then, you know, the blog archive is pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't really matter so much on the layout. And then the blog post template. So this is like what your actual blog looks like. So every theme has this as well, every website that you build. 
And really it's about readability. So when you're writing for the web, you know, you want to have short paragraphs. You want to make sure the line spacing looks good so it's not too cluttered. It wants to be easy on the eye, break up things with images, text, bullet points, bold text, all of those things. You also want to make sure it's not too wide. So like most themes have it 800 pixels, but really you build these four pages, you build your website, you choose web hosting, um, and then you set up Google Search Console and Google Analytics. So, you know, with Search Console, that's what indexes your website, submits your sitemap, and tells Google that you exist in order to rank your content. And if you want to check out more, if you want the exact specifics on every single tool to use, the hosting, the theme, and all of that, make sure to check out my WordPress tech stack video mentioned here. That'll go deeper, much deeper into the tactics, specifically exactly the tools that you need to start your website. So that's basically setting up your website. After you do that, you know, we're talking about choosing your niche. So this actually might come a little bit before all of that because you might need some stuff for your homepage. But when you're choosing your niche, there's a big myth about write about what you're passionate about. You know, go with your passions and then you'll make money. Well, that's not always the case. You know, I'm passionate about a lot of things, but it doesn't mean it's going to make me money. I might like running, but I'm not, I like running. Do I like writing about running for years? Not necessarily. So, you know, you know when we talk about choosing your niche, this, all this stuff builds on itself. So the niche is the foundation. And then we talk about keyword research in your niche and then search intent in your niche and how you have to match what people want to read. And that dictates then your content and your link building efforts, what to link to, all these things, which finally hits your monetization. So the niche is the initial pillar that you need to know. And in my course, we also cover this authority flywheel. So it's like you have your you, which is your unique experience, your identity, your beliefs, there's your expertise, your professional and personal experience in the world, basically. And then the market position. So that's based on keyword research, search volume. What if people are there, if there are enough people actually searching for what you want to talk about, and that's where affiliate opportunities come in, what products you can review and make commissions on, and then your leverage. So we all have different starting lines in life. We all have different connections and different leverage points that we can use when choosing our niche. So it could be a professional career or a lot of personal experience and a hobby. Sometimes, you know, someone has a really strong hobby and a professional career we have to choose between the two but ultimately if you see your face on the website what are you talking about and that's what choosing your niche is all about so once we have that and we have a website then we have to talk about what are we actually going to write on this blog so we have 90 days what are we going to start doing well that's where keyword research comes in before we you know start deciding what to write we have to know are people actually searching for this thing because as we know now blogs are living you know uh, google driven engines so basically it's not write everything and update an audience it's rank on Google for specific content and rank over time, getting new people to your audience and to your blog every single month. So when we talk about keyword research, we use the tool Ahrefs because it is the best SEO tool. And what we want to do is, uh, you know, create other, uh, create posts, 70% transactional, 30% informational. So 70% of your articles should be these kind of comparison product roundup posts about the best products in your niche uh, to make affiliate revenue. And then 30% can be informational sprinkled in. And if you want to like look at this specifically and exactly how to find these opportunities, you can check out here the keyword research SEO tutorial video, find exactly how to find your first keywords. But the goal here is to find emerging new products in your niche. So certain things that don't have a ton of competition yet can make you money, aren't so competitive with a million other sites writing about it, and are seemingly new and on the upswing. Because timing is a crucial component here. If you write about something early enough, you can start ranking for it. So really the key is finding keywords to add into your content plan with decent volume, so a good search volume, people are searching for it every month, and one to two low authority sites ranking on page one. So that's a sign that you can rank as a new blog. If the first page is just covered by authority sites that are super high you know, domain rating and are you know, really competitive, then it's gonna be impossible for a brand new blog to rank. Google's just not gonna do that. But if you see that other sites are ranking on page one that are really low authority sites, you, know, you can actually rank too, that's a really good sign. And then this is also where we look for some affiliate opportunities. So when you're doing the keyword research and you want to write an article, maybe something like, you know, I have on like the best video editing software. Well, does Adobe Premiere have an affiliate program? Does Final Cut Pro have an affiliate program? If you're going to be recommending products, can you make money on it? So you can do a little bit of affiliate research here, but don't cut too in over your head in this. Your first initial post that we're going to write might not ever rank. You know, it, it really is about learning and adapting and evolving over time. Not every post will rank, but if you do this enough, many of them will. So keyword research, eventually it becomes instinctual, but requires practice. So, you know, you want to be able to have this inst instinct where you look at a keyword report and be like, that's a good opportunity. That's a bad opportunity. So again, it, it requires uh, some decent amount of, you know, going through this and understanding, but make sure to check out that other video of mine if you're interested. So then, you know, we have keyword research. Now we have to actually create the content plan for our blog. So 
you want to add 12 blog post idea into your content calendar and then prioritize them. So based on that keyword research, create a spreadsheet and add, you know, 12, 12 keywords in there, you know, see what the volume is and then prioritize them. Which ones are like based on, you know, the volume that people are searching for it and the competitiveness, which one do you think you can make money on? Do a little bit of prioritization and then you start creating your blog post titles and then you want to, you know, Add, that, add those into the content calendar as well. So titles, you know, we cover that as well in, in different, you know, on-page SEO video that you can check out now. So this is exactly how to write this content. Another thing you want to do is like, think about uniqueness. So instead of just being a random small affiliate niche site, what makes you unique? And what would be interesting to see when someone visits your blog? So we cover one link bait post. This could be a really long list, like something like the top 100 outdoor patio ideas. And something that's like really unique to the niche. And then maybe you tell a personal story. So one of your blog posts is not optimized for keywords or anything. And you just write about who you are and a unique, interesting experience that you had to make your blog unique. That's going to help down the line when you're asking for links, building partnerships and doing all of that. So you want to have some uniqueness and not just be another random site. Now we get into the content assembly line. So again, when we're thinking about blogging in the 2020s, it's not so much writing content from a blank page, it's templatizing everything and creating systems for this stuff. So for example, in a transactional list post about the top seven best video editing software, you have an introduction, you have product one, and then you have a templatized version of this with features, pricing, what you think about it, what you like and dislike, call to action. Then you have product two, the exact same thing, three, four, five. So it's really templatizing this and making it easy on you to create this content where you're not writing like, getting writer's block or worried about being a writer. It's more about you know mon uh, assembling content in order to monetize it. So you templatize the post, you begin writing about products in your niche and creating these transactional posts and informational posts in your niche without worrying about affiliate marketing yet because it takes traffic and you know volume in order to make money with affiliates. So the key here is just focusing on creating this content and publishing these blog posts, you know, fearlessly without perfectionism. Then we get a, get to on-page SEO. So in order to rank in the 2020s, you need to have really good on-page SEO to tell Google that you're the best source of information. So here we can use a tool like Surfer SEO that will literally tell you the exact semantic keywords and number of keywords to add in your post, related keywords, all the things that you need to do from an on-page perspective. And again, if you want to like dive really deep into this, make sure to check out my video on on-page SEO. It covers the exact titles, headings, format, semantic keywords, how to use those tools and more. So that's like the initial 90 day content plan. I'm saying add 12 posts in because that's about a little bit less than one a week. So we wanna at least do one blog post a week. You can always do more than that, but this is like the minimum. So the content goals for this, you wanna publish 12, 2000 word articles in your first 90 days or so, which is about 24,000 words in 90 days. Ultimately that comes down to, well, what does that look like on a daily basis? It's 266 words a day. That's less than one page double space. It's about one page double space basically. and really to be a blogger and build this blogging content driven business, you need to be publishing one article a week minimum. If you can't get that into your calendar, or you're so busy that you can't create one article a week, then you're really stagnating your business and you shouldn't be doing this. Maybe it's just a hobby for you, but if you want to make real money, you got to at least do that minimum. And then at the end of nine days, you want to begin seeing search impressions in Google search console, maybe a little bit of trickling of traffic to some specific posts. This again is going to be dictated by some of the link building we'll talk about, because that's going to be what accelerates the initial traffic. But you want to just start seeing some impressions, which means you showed up on Google, people are at least visiting, seeing the title of your articles. And you can get some trickle of traffic here as well. But if you really want to see, you know, more of this content plan, how I plan my content, you can check out my video on my seven figure content plan, how I do it, how I structure the content, how I plan it and all of that. Now let's talk about link building. So there's two paths when it comes to starting a blog. There's your content path, what you're actually writing on your blog. And then there's link building, all the offsite stuff that you're doing, building partnerships, relationships, getting links. Those two paths are always going like at all times, no matter how long your, you know, your blog, how old it is, you're basically always doing these two things, publishing content, getting links. So the first step here is like understanding the authority landscape in your niche. So for me in the software niche and make money online, basically it's very competitive. So I need my domain rating, my site's authority to be high, probably in the seventies out of a hundred in order to start, you know, ranking for a lot of content. If you're in a different niche, maybe it's outdoor or home or something like in the e-commerce space that's related to products, kitchen, uh, living room, patio, outdoor, those types of product related niches, gardening, power tools, then you might only need a domain rating like in the 30s to rank content or even in the 10s or 20s, you don't need a ton of links, but you should start getting some because you need to be in the ballpark of other sites that are ranking in your niche. And this is what is really gonna be the solid foundation for your blog. Content can always be updated. You can always 
update, publish something, you know, the top five certain types of products and update it to seven and 10 and make it better and better over time. That's what I've done with a lot of posts, but really links are kind of like the solid structure of your blog. Like blog posts are like the rooms in a house. Links are like the foundation and the cement and the concrete that hold it up and build the authority and allow you to rank. So they're really important. So when you're not writing, you wanna focus 100% of your time on link building in your first 90 days. So that comes down to what message am I gonna send out to ask for links via guest posts and other partnerships? And that comes to an outreach template based on you know either email or LinkedIn or even Facebook or things like that. The key is to find your value spot and get the ball rolling. So in my other video here on link building that you can watch, I cover this in about 30 minutes exactly how to do this, finding leverage points, finding unique opportunities. This is probably the hardest part, especially when you're starting out and don't have any leverage or traffic or anything. Asking for links and doing guest posts and stuff is more difficult. So this is the hardest part of blogging, no doubt, is the initial link building. But once you get the ball rolling and you develop systems for this, it gets easier and easier. So the key is just to not quit. So you begin linking to your articles here and doing guest posts You know, in your niche, linking to pretty much everything. There's no perfect formula. You want to just build up your initial... Uh, domain rating here. It's not like you need to per perfectly link to these specific types of articles now at this point. We're just building kind of the initial domain rating. And then definitely make sure to watch this link building video because it goes over these strategies in depth. You'll notice here in these first 90 days, so I didn't man mention monetization once. And that's because everybody wants to monetize early. However, blog monetization is a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. People wanna just post a website up in the world and then all of a sudden join AdSense and make a few pennies on AdSense and then join all the affiliate programs before they're getting any traffic. You know, they might be on page five for, of Google getting nothing, but then they join the affiliate programs and all that. So you're, that would be focusing on the outputs, not the inputs. In the first 90 days of your blog or any content driven business, you need to just focus on publishing quality content, building links, building authority instead of focusing on monetization. I always say this, but you don't want to scrape pennies off the ground when there's hundred dollar bills just in sight. So. Why would you focus on monetization? You should not focus on any monetization really in the first 90 days. You should just focus on creating systems, learning, creating content, building some links, getting this stuff going. Because once you do that, if you keep doing it, you know, if you do 12 blog posts in 90 days, by the end of the year, even if you're just doing one a week, you have 50 blog posts, you're working on maybe even just getting one link a week with link building, doing a little bit of outreach, you're gonna get traffic, you're going to see success. And then you're gonna be ranking on page one for stuff if you do the keyword research right, like I teach finding emerging products. And at that point, then it's just like, boom, swap out the links, monetize right away. So this is just kind of, again, back to that maximizing the effective use of our time. We could join affiliate programs here with no traffic. We could join AdSense and struggle to add it into our blog. Or we could just focus on all the content link building to you know, f look at the future and build something that's a real business for ourselves before doing that. So by the end of your blog's first 90 days, you should have a functioning website with your core four pages, your home, about your blog role, your blog archive page, 12 blog posts live on your site minimum. Um, I'm saying 10 backlinks here because you're gonna be learning this process. Maybe the first month you're just learning about your outreach and what to say and how to message it in the marketplace on LinkedIn and doing this type of stuff to get backlinks. So, you know, this one is, you know, probably the hardest part, but you can eventually learn this and just kind of you know, do this a little bit a day. And you should start seeing your first traffic in Google Analytics within 90 days. The goal here though is not to make money in 90 days. Blogging is not a get rich quick scheme. You know, everyone wants to go viral on TikTok and Instagram and build some crazy make money online crypto world. But it's like blogging is the best way to build sustainable income that you're in control of. You can control the content you write. You can control your authority and link building with the right strategies. And you build this long-term growth lever, your own personal brand in the internet, uh, in the digital world. But the goal here is not to make a ton of money in 90 days. It's to learn as much as you possibly can because the outsourcing, the monetization, the fun stuff comes later. But you really have to get this part down first. So what this actually looks like on a daily basis is basically if you're spending 10 hours a week on the side of your full-time job blogging, that could be five hours a week writing blog content. So that would be your, you know, seven days a week times 266 words a day that could, you can complete that maybe faster than this, especially if you're using, you know, Surfer SEO, it's templatized. You could even use it to like Jasper or something to speed it up AI writing. And then you're, you know, spending the five hours of that week doing link building. So you can always change these numbers, but it's not anything crazy. It's not like you have to sell your soul to this or, you know, crush yourself to do this. What does that look like? Well, it's basically a few hours a day, 266 words a day. Maybe it's just like five outreach messages, messages a day for, uh, to get links. So like guest blogging emails, you send five targeted ones. You look at people on LinkedIn, you build connections. Again, you can check out my other videos on this stuff, but it's not like 
sending a million emails a day and writing blog posts every day. It's not that grind. You don't have to do it that way. Um, so it's just a little bit of work every day, but it's consistently having no zero sum days and making sure that you're always making progress on this. So how much does it cost to start? Well, uh, in my WordPress tech stack video, you know, we cover, it's basically $132 to launch your website with the exact setup that I use, I would use. Um, it can be cheaper if you go with cheaper options, but I recommend that you do this. And then you can do, Ahrefs is $199. So you can do one month of that if you need to, to do all of your keyword research for like six months, you know, get your content plan in order, but that is the best SEO tool to use. And then ongoing costs would be web hosting. $25 a month is for WPX, which is what we recommend. It's a little bit more pricey than like $3 a month for some cheaper options, but it is, in my opinion, the best. And then Surfer SEO is $49 a month. That does your on-page SEO. So that does specifically tells you what keywords to add to your articles when you're writing it. So basically you're running your blog for like $74 a month when you first start. And we have to think about this as a business owner. Like I make, you know, over $300,000 a month blogging today. And I made two, you know, I made $299,000 of profit blogging uh, in March of 2022. April's on pace for four. Um, and really we have to think about that from a business perspective, I'd have to own like 30 Starbucks to make that amount of profit. 30 Starbucks. And that would probably cost me five to 10 million, 10, probably 10 to $12 million to start in startup costs. So we're entering this digital age blogging, you know, might seem outdated or you know older than like people trying to go viral with like nfts and crypto and twitch and these things but it's still the best way to build a sustainable business for yourself that grows over time because google is not going anywhere but to build this business we need to spend a little bit of money you know to do it so 74 dollars a month to run an effective online business is not much when you think about it that way. When you wanna keep track of everything, what I do, I have a simple, I make it really simple. So I have spreadsheet, I have like one master spreadsheet and I have it in my course where you have your profit and loss, you have like your content plan in one tab, you have your link building outreach stuff in one tab. You can basically run your entire blog post with one Google sheet, your entire blog with one Google sheet. And then, you know, you can have a Google doc, just keep track of what you're doing for that week. You know, you can write the dates down, be like week of May 1st. And then you write down just the t things that you have to do. Get back to this person for this link trade you know, write, finish writing this article, just keep track of stuff, but it's don't overthink it. It's really simple. And the timeline of your success is really up to you. You can do one article a week. You could do three articles a week. You could do no link building and, you know, not really get much traffic or traction, or you could blow it out of the water and get, you know, five to 10 guest posts a month. The timeline of success is totally up to you. But if you're a real, you know, if you want to treat this like a real business, you have to put some time in. So I say minimum 10 hours a week, focusing on content and links, content and links, content and links in order to build the passive income machine. So the first 90 days is all about just building that initial machine. So if you want to dive deeper into the strategy, this kind of covered a broad overview and gave you the tactics, uh, the tactics are in other videos. There's check out other videos on my channel. These ones go over the stuff specifically in detail, like keyword research, how to do on page SEO, how to do link building and find your leverage point, all that stuff. These videos right here, um, is almost two hours of content. So just check out my channel for that kind of stuff. There's a lot more that dive really deep into the specifics. But this video, I wanted to give you a framework for the first 90 days and kind of an action plan so that you can you know, know what to do on a daily basis. So you know, when we're working full time and we wanna build something on the side, we have to maximize the effective use of our time in order to build this profit runway. And in 90 days though, you're not gonna necessarily be making enough money to quit your job. However, you can build the foundation to accelerate that, that by month six to 12, you will. So we'll cover that very soon. Now, if you're interested in learning more, exactly how I make over $300,000 a month blogging, what blogging is in the 2020s, how it's more of a science than an art, make sure to watch my free blogging masterclass. It's a 90 minute training lots of students that have uh, have had aha moments going through it and please check out other videos on my channel you know i write about all kinds of things related to business to blogging to making money online i hope you found this video useful you know let me know what you think where are you in your blogging journey please like the video and i will see you in the next one